Today we're exploring this HP Kayak, a weird and wonderful dual Pentium 3 powerhouse from 1999. We'll take it apart, gawk at some of its quirky internals, and see if we can't get this thing going again. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy the lighthearted whimsy that was late 90s computing, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. This is an HP Kayak XM600 desktop, and I'm gonna be honest, I bought this thing without even looking at the specs, because it looks awesome. I knew this thing had a Pentium 3 in it, but color me surprised when I found out there's two of them in here, complete with a Windows 2000 Professional 2 CPU license sticker. Though the case says designed for Windows NT, or I guess Windows 98 if you're some kind of lunatic. This thing uses some weird RAM that I've never seen before, and this thing doesn't have a hard drive in it, so I'll have to scrounge around for something. According to HP's original September 1999 press release, the Kayak line was targeted towards business and technical users, but the selling point was options and upgrades, up to dual Pentium 3s, advanced video card selections, optional dual channel Ultra 3 SCSI, all in a lighthearted desktop or tower chassis with a design that screams mandatory office fun. So I think first, let's open this thing up, see what's lurking inside, and then let's try a software restore from the original CDs to see if anything weird came pre-installed on your HP Kayak. You know, this thing is kind of making me reminisce about the good old days. You know, back when this HP Kayak was new and we thought the internet was a place of wonder and possibility. Of course, now we know that it's a terrifying dystopian nightmare of privacy invasion, geo-targeted corporate manipulation, and malware, which is why a secure VPN like today's sponsor NordVPN is pretty much essential. The first time I ever needed a VPN was to bypass geofencing. You know, things like watching BBC iPlayer from the US so I could keep up with Donna Noble's latest hijinks. Ah, the Dr. Donna. NordVPN gives you a secure tunnel straight from your computer to whatever it is you're accessing, which blocks third parties and malicious ne'er-do-wells from tracking you, hijacking your connection with a man-in-the-middle attack, or smashing you with spammy ads or even ads with malware. Especially if you're traveling or using public Wi-Fi or hotspots at a coffee shop, you don't know how secure their router or internet is. They say the internet is a series of tubes, but what they don't say is that those tubes are pretty gross. NordVPN gives you an extremely fast and secure tunnel right through all that nonsense. Threat Protection Pro checks files you download for malware, checks links for fake websites, and it can even block pop-ups. So go to NordVPN slash Action Retro to get a two-year plan plus four additional months with a huge discount. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Again, that's NordVPN.com slash Action Retro. And now, Let's go kayaking. So this thing has my least favorite kind of case opening mechanism. These two usually very brittle tabs, which you have to kind of destroy your fingers pushing in to get them to release. Oh my God, let go. Oh, ow. I especially love how these sharp corners stab you when it starts to move. But once we're inside, we're greeted with a number of weird and wonderful things, some of which I've never seen before. We'll start off with the wonderful underneath this little plastic fan shroud air pusher thing. We have two slot one Pentium 3s. The heat sinks double as a musical instrument. All right, now let's talk about some things that are weird. We have what appears to be an AGP graphics card. I don't even know what this slot is. I guess it's AGP of some description, but the card fits in there very strangely. One quick look at the manual, and apparently it's an AGP Pro slot, which can accept normal AGP video cards with this kind of connector, and AGP video cards with a much more giant connector that takes extra power. Continuing to take this apart, one of the five PCI slots here has a networking card with a cable connected for wake on LAN, and Etherlink 10100. 
And now something I've definitely never seen before, this super weird memory. So this is RAM bus DRAM. And right off the bat, there's a lot of weird stuff about it. Starting with the two notches in the center. Most RAM I've ever seen have either two notches kind of far apart or one notch vaguely in the middle. Another weird thing is that these have heat sinks on them. And weirdest of all, the third RAM socket was populated with this RD RAM Terminator module, which is not in of itself memory, and in fact only exists for continuity between these two sticks of RAM and the rest of the system. And there's a bit of a story behind this stuff. You see, it was sort of in a Betamax VHS kind of scenario with the nowadays more common SD RAM, although unlike Betamax and VHS, RD RAM was actually not any better really than SD RAM. In fact, benchmarks showed that SD RAM and RD RAM Perform pretty much the same, but RD RAM was way more expensive and had a huge licensing fee from Intel, and uh, yeah, kind of deserved to die. But this is what we're stuck with, and we have two 128 meg modules. All right, I've got all the components back installed, though unfortunately, some security minded IT boffin has pilfered the original hard drive. So you know what that means. Let's pick a new one with the wheel of SSDs. All right, I've got a little SATA to IDE adapter from StarTech.com. Make sure this is set to cable select with this jumper. Hook this up to HDD master and unceremoniously shove it inside the case. I've got my most 90s LCD as well as this ridiculous Alltech Lansing maxi sound keyboard with built in speakers and microphone. Now that is a proper battle station. Fortunately, the Internet Archive has the original System Restore CDs for the Kayak XM600. Let's see if we can do a full software restore. All right, F8 for boot menu. Boot from CD-ROM. Hey, this is going to install Windows 2000 or Windows NT. Neat. Enter the option corresponding to your country. United States, United Kingdom, or the country of Europe and the country of Asia. All right, HP, failing geography. Yeah, Windows 2000 full system restore. Sounds good to me. Formatting of your hard disk is not compatible. Uh-oh. All right, this time let's choose partition and format the hard disk. Let's do custom partition. Delete everything. I guess that worked. Let's do F disk, enable large disk support. All right, format it. All right, now we are formatting. Excellent. When purchased, did your PC come equipped with a CD writer? N, no, escape. That's weird. All right, apparently we're installing. Good old dots for progress. Hopefully this does not take between 30 minutes and two hours. All right, I think install is complete. Stop beeping so loud. Starting Windows. Man, look at that beautiful HP aesthetic. Oh yeah, Windows 2000 has been installed successfully. All right. Well, it restarted itself into whatever the heck this is. What on earth? It's like a Windows 3.1 interface for some reason. What in the world is this? All right, well, I exited and it is now restarting. All right, now we're booting back into Windows 2000. Weird. And now we're in the Windows 2000 setup wizard. All right, sure. Let's pick a good computer name. We'll call this garbage and a nice secure administrator password. That's definitely not just the word action. I think we're finally done. This is the second time it said Windows 2000 has been installed successfully. Hmm. All right, finally, we're ready to get some real work done. 
Now let's see what kind of weird crap is installed on here. Click on the start button. All right. Oh, it better not be nothing. Better be some weird HP stuff on here. Working comfortably is just an HTML page. All right, there's some HP HTML pages. Netscape Navigator in all caps. Well, that's anticlimactic. I was hoping this was gonna be full of weird HP cruft and bloatware, but there's nothing except this incredibly aesthetic background. It's just a bog standard Windows 2000 install. I'm a pinball wizard. So that's the HP Kayak, an incredibly aesthetic Windows 2000 workstation with a surprising lack of HP cruft on it. But if you thought I bought this thing to restore it to Windows 2000, I'm gonna do some incredibly weird Linuxy shenanigans on it and see just how modern of a Linux PC we can get out of this thing while still keeping it Pentium 3 based. I'm sure this will work. So if you like seeing weird Linuxy nonsense on really old but aesthetically pleasing machines, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. But that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching. And I just want to give a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and channel members. Thank you so much, each and every one of you, for supporting me and supporting this channel and all the weird stuff I do. I am so very grateful and I just could not do this without you.